Hello and welcome to another Yellowfin University video. In this video, we're going to be talking about data transformations. Now, we're going to break this up into about three videos because there's three different steps in the transformation process, the extract, the transform, and the load. So we call those the input, the transform, and the output. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the input. We'll go through each of the different input steps you can do, talk a little about them, and we'll close out this video and again the next video will be on transformation the following video after that will be on the output so the goal is to have these videos nice and condensed so you can easily just see exactly what you want um, and move on to the next video when you're ready so data transformations input steps first thing we need to talk about is how do you even get access to data transformation this is new in yellowfin um, as of let's see 1127 when i'm recording this video so as with everything, Yellowfin is very concerned about security and governance overall. So to turn on data transformations, it's actually a role-based permission. So to do that, we're going to open up the admin console and we're going to go to roles. So then you choose the role that you want to have access to the data transformation process. In this case, I only want my system administrator role to have access. We'll come down to the data sources and views. And as we scroll down, we'll see data transformations and it's in red. Why is it in red? That's because we just wanna make sure you're aware that you can run custom scripts here. So you only should enable this for trusted developers. Um, again, they can run custom scripts. They can create their own uh, transformation widgets actually with this, it's very open source. And um, we just wanna make sure you're giving that access to the right person, Yellowfin, First and foremost, is all about governance, and this is one of the ways we control that. So now that I have data transformations turned on, I will go ahead and save that. So my system administrator role now has access. Now to gain that new permission, I do have to log out and then log back into Yellowfin. Now that I've logged back in, under the Create button here, I'll have Transformation Flow. So we'll go ahead and click Transformation Flow because we're gonna create a new transformation flow here. Again, this video is only about the input steps, but just to give you a high level overview here, um, you have the following steps. You got input, you have transform, and you have output. So we'll talk about all three of those, but this video specifically, we'll talk about the input steps. But first, let's talk about some of the other uh, areas you see on this screen. Now the gear icon is going to have some settings for you if you want to set these. Preview row limit. So when you run this transformation here while we're working on it, it's only going to limit, it's going to pull in 200 rows. So you can change this number to whatever you want. Maybe it's only 10 rows, whatever. Um, but we want to, we started off with 200 just for performance re reasons. Because all you're doing here is just trying to get your scripts right and make sure the transformation process is perfect. You don't want to pull in everything right away. And then we also have an error threshold. So you can set this to negative one and it actually disables the check. However, we do like to have an error threshold. So that way, let's say you run this transformation and you have more than 100 errors in this case. It's going to stop the transformation process and spit out an error to the administrator. Um, the reason we like this is because let's say you have 10,000 rows you're trying to insert and 6,000 of them error out. Well, you're only going to write 4,000 to your database. Do you want it to write if you're really missing out on 6,000 rows? Probably not. That's why we have this error threshold. So whatever you're comfortable with missing, essentially, if there was an error in your process, maybe some of your data wasn't very clean, um, you would want to set that here. Now we also have a schedule. Schedule is very important because this is why we have data transformation processes. So maybe you're getting that file every week from your distributor or whoever it may be. In the schedule here, you can enable uh, successful notifications. You can set the frequency of when you want this process to run. In this case, uh, by default, it does every week on Saturday it's going to run. However, I could change that. For now, we're going to turn the scheduling off. We also have a little information here where it tells us just some general, here's uh, the current status, the last time it was modified, and the creation date, and then history. So if there's a running history of things that have been done to it, it will be listed here. Run logs, so essentially the, the times it's been ran, not necessarily the history of changes. 
And then finally you have the play button and that's actually going to run your transformation. There's nothing on here. So it's not, that's why it's grayed out. Otherwise it would be yellow. And then these two buttons here just allow you to center. So let's say you have a bunch of transformation widgets on here and I want to recenter. I can just click this button or here I can just show this little area and this would show me all my transformations and I can kind of click and drag around here and it would show me um, exactly where I was on my transformation process. So without further ado, let's talk about input steps. The first one on the list here is extracting from a delimited file. So this is perfect for those companies that receive CSV files or Excel files and want to upload them into Yellowfin on a consistent basis here. So to do this in Yellowfin, you can see it's red. It's just saying, hey, it's, it's not complete. We need to fill something out. So in this case, we can choose from four different areas to grab this file from. We can grab it from a local file, meaning on my computer, a network share, an FTP, or an SFTP. So to look at the network share very quickly, this is gonna have the same settings here at the FTP and the SFTP. As you can see, you just need to enter your host name, the port number, the path to that file, and then the username and password if required. So SFTP, obviously required, you would need to put that. If the other ones don't require it, you don't need to enter it. Um, but for th the purposes of this demo, we're just gonna do a local file here. I've already saved uh, the path. Whoops, no, I haven't, that was a lie. So we'll go ahead and write it real quickly here. There we go, there's my path to the file. And then I can click on advanced settings here and we can control some things. So my comma, uh, my separator is a comma. I'm using a period for decimals and I'm gonna use low precision here just cause there's not that many rows, but precision is basically how many columns do I analyze before I determine what type this column is. Is it a text, is it a number, etc. So we'll use low precision here and click apply. After I've clicked apply, you'll notice here it has extracted some data and we can see that data down at the bottom. Remember it's only gonna extract a maximum of 200 uh, different rows if we wanna do that. Um, I've said it, I've left it as the default, which is 200, but of course you could change that. Now we can do a few things here uh, with this. We can go over to the fields tab here and we can actually change the name of columns. So if I want to change state to something else, I can call it, I don't know, maybe province if I wanted to. And then I can actually do some things with that. I can uh, eliminate white space so we can remove leading, remove trailing, compress consecutive white spaces and then separate camel case if we wanted to. Uh, to go back into this, we can switch case. So all upper, all lower, or proper case. We can do a substring. So if we had a string and there is a certain number in there within the string that contains a code that you need, you could simply, I don't know, maybe use the middle function here and say I want six characters starting from the third character in my string, click submit, and it's only gonna grab those six characters starting from the third character. Um, so many different things you can do. You can even duplicate the field. And then if you look at a numeric value, the only difference here is that you can show number precision. So how many decimals do I want? And what do you want to do with the rounding practice? Finally, you have errors. Are there any errors here? No errors in this one. It would let you know if there was a problem. And then finally, details. So this is called extract from delimited fire, file, um, but maybe we want to call this what it is. So in this case, we're extracting from, I think, address file and we need to add another s there and then i could give it a little description if i wanted but once you're done make sure to go back and click apply so it saves these settings and there we go so see we've renamed this column here and it's been renamed to address file so that way we know what it is and you can even come down here and you can change like in this case i could change it to timestamp maybe a numeric divide um, and you can rename the columns down here as well, as well as perform some of those functions that I showed you in that panel. So multiple places to do that. All right, so that about does it for the CSV file here. I think we'll continue going because the other ones are fairly uh, short now that we've described all the different things you can do with the fields. So we'll go ahead and delete this one here and we'll grab our next step, which is extract from freehand SQL. So first thing first is it presents you with the data sources. I'm gonna use my staging database here and simply write your query or drop your query in if you already have one saved. So I think I have a table called customer orders in here. I'm gonna validate that SQL, click submit, and let's just apply that and see if I did write the right table indeed. And I did, so here's my data. Again, only grabbed 
200 rows from this table. I can go in, I can edit my SQL again, and of course do all those functions to the columns as I showed you before. And this is great because if you have links across databases or whatnot, you would be able to write cross database queries um, as part of that extract process. And you can also take advantage of those custom functions that are in your database as well. Maybe it's a stored procedure, etc. So we'll go ahead and delete this one, move on to the next. The next step here is extracting from a report in Yellowfin, which is actually very cool. So I'm just going to type in invoice here. So we'll do the athlete invoice summary, let's say. And here's the columns that come out of this report. And I can click more details, and it just tells me information about the report, essentially, maybe some more about those columns. But I don't need anything from there, so I'm going to go ahead and click Add Report. Here's those columns. And I'm going to choose to maybe grab the top four columns here. I don't need these columns. Maybe they're not important to me. And I will click Apply. And that's also something that I hadn't mentioned earlier. As you click these check boxes, it means I want to include this column or I don't want to include this column. So you don't have to extract everything from a table or everything from a view. You can tell it what you want to extract specifically. And so you can see here, it has extracted some of that data from the report. Very cool. Our next step is the single table. So this is again pulling from a data source, but you're just saying just pull the whole table. I don't want to write a, a SQL query. So I'll go ahead and submit that. Maybe I don't want to bring in the, well, let's not bring in like an IP or a home address. How about that? And click apply. So when I do that, it drags my fields in. And of course, I don't have anything in my latitude longitude, but I could also go to fields here and say, hey, I want my latitude longitude at the end. So I'm going to drag my zip up there. So I reordered those columns. Now uh, that we are done with the single table extract, the last thing we want to talk about here is the third party connector. Uh, so this is cool. So Yellowfin has those third party connectors out there and they're all on our marketplace and you can go out there and you can choose any of them they're all free to download there's no extra charge for them so the cool thing is here let's say you want to be able to track things over time with your google analytics data let's say in this example i can simply select my google analytics connector i'm going to take all columns it's the only table within this connector and I don't, it's giving me an error. It's just saying, hey, you need to input some dates and whatnot. So I'll deselect all the columns. I'm only going to grab maybe the first, I don't know, seven or, or so. Maybe, uh, yeah, let's grab the first seven. Why not? And then for this particular connector, Google requires us to enter a start and end date. So we'll go ahead and enter that start and end date. So let's just do like minus three months from now to today. We'll put a plus zero. There we go. Click submit and apply. So now Ye Yellowfin's going to go out to the API, grab that Google information that you just requested. Boom, here it is. Um, so this might be something that's interesting to use. If you wanted to, let's say, extract your data from Google Analytics on a monthly basis, you could set these this date period up to just today minus 30 days, whatever it may be, set the schedule to run on the first of every month. So it goes back, it grabs your previous month's data and uploads it to your database. So now you have that Google Analytics data at your power to, to track maybe history over time or whatever it, it may be. You can now store that data from Google Analytics. So very cool indeed. Again, you could have any connector from our marketplace. I had only uploaded the Google Analytic one to my Yellowfin um, system here. So that about does it for the input steps. This is probably going to be the longest video that we have. I'm sorry it's coming up on 15 minutes here. Um, but we did have a lot to cover with the permissions and, and getting the... Um, all the different operations that you can perform within an input step. So thank you for tuning into this video. Tune in for the next video, which is the transformation steps. We'll go over, there's actually a lot to cover here as far as the generic steps, and we'll talk a little bit um, about steps that you can create yourselves. All right, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.